Brain Food, Random Stimulation for the Brain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these great little Pokemon balls. They only cost a couple of pounds each to make and they make fantastic novelty gifts. When complete, they look great with nice bright colors and a shiny gloss finish. As a bonus, you can still pull them apart to hide treats inside for birthdays or Christmas presents. And because you can leave the hanging tabs on during the build, you can hang them from a Christmas tree as decorations giving you somewhere to store your chocolate gold coins. Of course, they also come in handy for storing trinkets inside and you can use them as colorful decorations for bedrooms. But by placing a smoke bomb inside and using a very simple rig pull ignition, we take the fun factor up a notch and have some fun with my son at the same time. At the end of the day, these are just cheap coloured smoke pellets from eBay. But as long as you wrap them in some nice thick foil, they won't burn into the plastic. And if you want to increase the smoke and power, there's plenty of extra space inside these poker balls. The first thing we're going to need are these clear plastic craft balls. And I picked up five of these eight centimeter balls on eBay for just over eight pounds with free delivery. And because they're designed to store stuff inside, they just pop open with a nice firm pull. If we take a closer look at the clipping mechanism, you'll notice that one side has an inner male clip like this, and the other half has a female recess that it clips into. Not only is that how it fixes together, but it's going to help us with the decoration in a moment. If you're building a freestanding Pokeball, the first stop is to cut off this plastic eye on both sections. I'm taking care of business with a hacksaw blade, but if you don't have one of these, you could also burn it off, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. Next it's time to mark the button detail. Just grab something round that's roughly the correct size, and for me that turned out to be a 10 pence piece coin. Now grab a permanent marker and carefully draw around the outside and we're good to go. And if you've marked over the top of the freshly cut hanging tab, that's a nasty detail we've just got rid of. Obviously if you want to hang your Pokeball up, you're going to leave the plastic eye tab in and mark your button detail 90 degrees away from it. Now these plastic balls may split if you drill them with a big drill, so if you haven't got a Dremel tool, a paper clip like this makes an easy alternative. Just mangle it into a basic shape like this, find a gas torch or stove to heat it up so it's glowing nice and hot. Now as long as you take your time and stay inside the mark lines, it shouldn't take long before you've cut all the way around the circumference and the waste just falls inside. If you have got a Dremel tool, it's a simple matter of slipping in a grinding or sanding tool to knock off any shonky looking edges and get a lovely clean finish ready for the next stage. But if you've not made those Dremel tool gains in your life yet, don't panic, you're not stuffed. Just grab some grit paper, 40 to 80 grade works well, then cut out a small rectangle like this. Next pick up a pencil or pen and fold it around so it's curved into the same shape. All it takes now is two offcuts of tape wrapped tightly around the top and bottom and hey presto we've invented a mini sander. When that's all done you should have a pretty nice round hole and the ball still opens and closes easily. And if you can pick up your coin or template like this you know it's an excellent fit and we can start the decoration. Grab a permanent marker and clamp it in your fingers like this with your middle finger near the tip. By holding the marker in this way, your middle finger acts as a guide and we can mark the inside of the female joint that we noted earlier without slipping. By carefully adjusting the position of your middle finger as you colour in the inner joint, you shouldn't get an overspill of marker on the inside of the ball where you don't want it. If the black isn't quite strong enough on the first pass, go over it again once the first coat of permanent marker has dried. This really shouldn't take very long and when clipped together, it should look quite neat. Now we can blast some colour on, and here I'm using a standard acrylic paint, nothing fancy, and a nice soft brush. We're starting on the female section again, and I'm going to try and paint right up to the black lines we've just marked, not in them. That way if your marker pen isn't quite perfectly covered, the red won't show up later. And of course it keeps the poker ball easy to open and close later without paint clagging up the joints. Get the paint on nice and thick and as even as you can. Then when you turn the ball over, the finish should look great. The other male section gets the exact same treatment, but this time there's no details to worry about. Just smash it on. And while that's drying, we can crack on with the button detail. Using the same template as earlier, mark around it onto some silver card. And if you can't find any card that's thick enough, like I couldn't, you can always glue two halves of a thin sheet together with a prick stick. Cut around the inside of your marks with a decent pair of scissors. To trim it up nice and round, consider holding the template and the card together and trim off any sticky outy bits. 
The outer button detail was taken care of by using a smaller coin placed in the centre and a permanent marker to colour it in. The very outside cut can also be marker penned to give it a slightly nicer look when complete. Finally, the very inner circle is completed using the end of a pencil and a fine marker pen. With that done, pick up your painted Pokemon shells and check they're dry. If they are, we can finish the job. It should now be coming together nicely. And don't worry if you have small areas of marker on the middle joint that aren't quite perfect. We'll give those a tickle in a moment. The final part of the build is to glue the silver button in position. If you have a hot glue gun, place a couple of spots inside before committing. Then when it's cooled slightly, final positioning adjustments can be made. We don't want it sticking in or out. When you're 100% happy, a nice generous layer of glue seals the deal. If you do have any black details that need touching up, you can do that now. And as long as you don't draw over onto the painted sections, it will go unseen in the final build. Clip it together and there you go, done. For my smoker balls, I just packaged up some standard coloured smoke pellets with a very simple pull start ignition. And if you want to know how I made those, let me know in the comments below. I've got a very easy, reliable system. Well, that's it. Please consider a like, share, or subscribe for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching.